So there's a lot of interest uh, around about baleage, uh, whether it's economical. And at this high school, I think y'all have heard or will hear some about how baleage can be used in your operation. So that's what we're going to talk about today uh, is just the economic returns and a risk analysis of baleage. Uh, you see my name here, but this is also some work uh, that are a couple of people that helped me with this. Dr. Ross Pruitt at, the, uh, at LSU, Louisiana State University, as well as uh, Dr. Hancock, who's uh, coordinating and in charge of the Hay Program or the uh, Hay Convention. So just to give you a little background, and all this is, is something that I'm sure everybody knows, but when we talk about pasture feed, hay cost, all the groceries that go in a cow, those, those expenses account for about two-thirds of the total of the cash expenses that we have in a beef cattle operation. And we've spent years in extension trying to help people find ways to lower those costs. <clears throat> so one of the ways that we have found, and again that, that you'll hear some at this convention, is how to look at or, or evaluating baleage and, and determining if that is, is something that you can use in your operation. Uh, and that certainly uh, is something that has a lot of merit at least in, in today's environment. Now, <clears throat> as we talk about baleage, uh, there's a couple of things that, that, uh, that we uh, usually think about. And just so we're all on the same page, you see a picture of a bale wrapper here. And what we're talking about is baleage is harvesting these forages at this higher moisture content. And I'm sure Dr. Hancock's gonna talk to you about this. Uh, it helps us out in terms of weather, uh, making sure that we've, get, we've uh, gotten this hay or these forages put up in a timely manner. It helps us with some of our labor because labor is becoming more and more difficult to find. Uh, and it also helps us reduce those storage losses that we experience here in the southeastern U.S. One of the other things that we see, it also allows us, that since we're able to put up uh, that baleage at an at a, uh, earlier stage, if you will, that's going to increase the nutritive value uh, as well as the palatability, which should lower our feeding cost. And then in the overall scheme of things, hopefully it gives us the ability uh, to harvest and store some of these annual forages, which are gonna lower our feed cost and improve our animal productivity. So all in all, there's, there are lots of good reasons to be looking at baleage. Well, as we talk about baleage and the economics of it, there's really three ways that baleage can pay for itself. Or we at least talk about ways that it could. It could do it either through reducing feeding and storage losses. It could, we could, uh, it could be economical by uh, reducing our purchase feed costs due to the fact that we're putting up higher quality forages. And then finally, <clears throat> the last way is the combination of the two of reducing the feeding and the storage losses as well as lowering our feed costs. And as you might imagine, the economics of this is, is all driven, or a lot of it is driven by herd size because there could be some instances to where um, maybe it makes sense on a per bale basis, but when you look at <clears throat> those additional costs of either the bale wrapper and or the special baler that it takes to put this up, then it may or may not be economical depending on your herd size. So uh, Dr. Pruitt and myself along with uh, Dr. Hancock looked at <coughs> trying to just look at the economics of baleage. And so the way that we did this was we compared the direct cost of using this inline bale wrapper to conventional hay production. And we did this for Bermuda grass and winter annuals and our second and third uh, scenarios that we'll discuss in a minute. Uh, we did this, or the, the information that we used came from our published UGA extension budgets. And just so you'll know that we're talking about uh, what type of cow we're talking about here, it's a 1,200 pound cow uh, that we're feeding for 150 days at 2% of her body weight, uh, or, and that works out to 1.8 tons per cow. Actually, I think we uh, did that for 120 days, I think is the number, because 150 days is five months, and that's a long time. So we actually did it for 120, so that's a typo there. Okay, <clears throat> so a couple of things for you to know, at least to, to know where we're starting from. If we look at the total pounds of dry matter in a bale, uh, in a conventional hay bale, which would be a 1,000-pound roll, as most folks call it, uh, with 15% dry matter, that means there's 850 dry pounds in that bale. If you compare that then with the Bermuda grass baleage or winter grass baleage, there's going to be 600 pounds of dry matter in each one of those bales. Then, <clears throat> based on the budgets that we have, these are the number of bales that you would get from each cutting. This first harvest total cost here includes not only the, the operating costs like fertilizer and labor and those kind of things, but that also includes the wrapping uh, there as well. 
So then after that first cutting, and the reason that we do it this way is because a lot of times you're going to put out some of those uh, plant nutrients like P and K that you're going to put out first time of the year. So that, that cost is going to be there uh, regardless. And then after that, uh, we've got these second and third cuttings, and certainly uh, that can vary from year to year. So these are the total number of bales that we're going to get after that. So <clears throat> when you do the math, you'll see the total additional cuttings then that we have in terms of dollars per acre. If you prorate the establishment cost of your Bermuda grass, that's going to be $50 an acre. Of course, with the winter annuals, you do that every year, but that cost is already reflected up in the top. So then that gives us a total cost per acre down here at the bottom, and that includes fuel, fertilizer, labor, wrapping, everything. Um, <clears throat> So then you see down here we're, what we're talking about, the total dry matter tons per acre. And then finally, when we're looking at it on a cost per ton of dry matter basis, uh, hay's going to run us about $95 a ton. Uh, baleage is going to run us about $190 for Bermuda grass and about $135, $140 if we're talking about winter annuals. On a cost per bale basis, you can see it's going to run anywhere from $40 to $57 depending on uh, whether it's uh, uh, conventional hay bale, winter, an winter annuals, or uh, Bermuda grass baleage. So <clears throat> the first thing that we did uh, was we looked at just will, will uh, baleage pay for itself just on the basis of reducing storage losses. And so we've all heard discussions about how, how much hay we can lose. So uh, one of the things that we did was we just did a simulation, which is we just tried to do a, an experiment over and over and over again using the computer saying what happens if, if it's a best case scenario, the expected case scenario, or the worst case scenario. And so that's what we've got here with hay. So we said the best, the best in terms of hay loss that we'd ever have with hay would be a 5% loss. Typically we're going to expect to lose about 15%. Uh, and in the worst case scenario we could lose 40%. You see with baleage that it's much less. Best case scenario is 3%. Well, normal, on average, would expect to lose about 10. And then uh, worst case scenario is about 15%. And we came up with these numbers from looking at several different studies and just kind of assimilating all of those into some numbers that we can do something with. So <clears throat> the first thing that we see here is at least in the first scenario, it's going to be really, really difficult to justify going and spending the money for baleage just on the basis of storage losses. Because what you see over here, you see the cow, the 1,200 pound cow, 2% of her body weight per day, feeding her 128 days, so she needs right at 3,000 pounds of dry matter. Well, when you adjust that for the feeding losses that we would have, and then you take into consideration the value of those bales, and we're talking about uh, this for a Bermuda grass bale, so we're talking about Bermuda grass hay versus Bermuda grass baleage, it's really going to be very, very difficult for you to make this come out. Matter of fact, in the scenario that we looked at here, it looked at, we looked at uh, the fact that we were losing right at $135 per cow per year from, from putting up the baleage just on the basis of reducing storage losses. Now, you'll see one of these little charts in a little bit, <clears throat> and uh, statisticians would call this a CDF, or a cumulative density function. Maybe what you want to think about it is, is in terms of probabilities, this is the probability of somebody making or losing a certain amount of money. So if you see, if you see right here uh, on average, or if you see right down here at the bottom, you see the minus $90. So that's a, minus, that's a $90 loss in terms of putting up baleage. And you look over here on the left, this is the percent chance that you would either make or lose that money. So if you come across, so let's start here at 80% because that's an easy number to find. So you see 80% and you come over to 80% and then you follow that down. What this is telling you is, is that there is an 80% chance that you will lose $100 or more per cow from investing in the baleage just on the basis of saving uh, of reduced storage losses. Um, there's a very, very small chance, there's only about a 5% chance up here that we see that you would lose 80 or that you would save $80 or more. So again, on the basis of reducing storage losses, baleage is not something that, that probably is going to pay for you. However, <clears throat> if you look at then, in, in, a, in reality, I don't know very many people that would actually 
invest in this equipment on the basis of just reducing their storage losses. Typically, it's from the standpoint of trying to reduce feeding costs and a couple of other factors, but we're trying to do this in a, uh, in a stepwise manner, so we're gonna take it step by step. So if we talk about then <clears throat> reducing those feeding costs, uh, and the way that we did this was we took the, the basic balancer that some of you have probably heard of that was put together by uh, Dr. Stewart and Hancock and myself, and we look at assuming that we won't have any feeding losses. So we're gonna take the feeding losses out of this for right now. And we're gonna feed a lactating cow, and that's an important consideration here. So we're feeding a lactating cow 120 days of either uh, Bermuda grass hay, uh, Bermuda grass baleage, or winter, or winter annual baleage. And the supplement then is whole cottonseed, corn, and then a, in that mixture, a 50-50 mixture of corn gluten feed and soy hull pellets. And the way that we're doing this now is we're looking at <clears throat> the, uh, the possibility there of if you're having baleage or if you have the baleage equipment, one of the advantages of it is the fact that you can put up hay uh, whenever it's time to cut hay, regardless of what the weather is supposed to be like, or almost regardless of what it's supposed to be like. And so those differences are then reflected in the quality of the hay. So you can see, so we're looking at good hay, average hay, and poor hay, and all of these are Bermuda grass uh, hays. So we're looking at a 12% crude protein for the good and average, 6% for the poor. If we're talking about TDNs or energy, you can see the good is 58%, 53 for the average, down to 45% for the poor hay. And Dr. Hancock would probably tell you there's been some instances this past year in Georgia that we've had some TDNs come in less than 45. I've even heard of some instances of it being 35 or less. So <clears throat> if you take into account then how many, so then if you take into account the quality of this hay and then you balance the ration based on what a lactating cow would need for and using this hay and then the supplement that we've got there you can see then uh, that actually the worse, the sorrier the hay is, the less of it that you feed and the more supplement that you feed down here. So <clears throat> probably the, the most important or one of the numbers you want to look at is this total feeding cost per cow. And as you might suspect, the worse the hay gets, the higher the feeding cost. And again, keep in mind that we're feeding a lactating cow, and the idea is we're trying to keep her in condition as she's, uh, as she's uh, nursing that calf. <clears throat> so if we're feeding them uh, Bermuda grass hay, you can see the range is from 250 all the way up to almost $360. If we're feeding baleage, we're talking about in excess of $400. And again, the reason is, is because you're trying to feed a lactating cow Bermuda grass hay, or Bermuda grass period, and from this standpoint, there's just not enough nutrition there. You still got a supplementer. It doesn't matter what the quality of the Bermuda grass is. However, and this is where I think there's a lot of promise, is when you look at the quality of this winter grass baleage, or these winter annual baleages, I should say, the fact is there's no supplementation. Basically, winter annual baleage, you can winter a cow on winter annual baleage with no supplementation. And so as a result, then you see that our total winter annual cost on this cow is then $254 per cow. So if you're looking at this from different scenarios in terms of herd size, so 25 cows, 50 cows, 100 all the way up to 500 cows, if we're looking at this first from putting up Bermuda grass, you can see that the more cows we have, the more money we lose. Now, even if we're always gonna be putting up poor quality hay, we're still losing somewhere around $1,100, $1,200. Hopefully you're not gonna be in that boat all the time. Hopefully you're at least doing average hay most of the time. So again, given the fact, <clears throat> and we're talking about a lactating cow here, uh, but keep in mind, so, so as you should see here, as, these, uh, as the number of cows goes up, the more money you lose by trying to justify the baleage on the basis of Bermuda grass. However, when we start talking about uh, winter, putting up winter annuals, now, what we're, now we see that all these numbers are positive. And this is actually where uh, I think Baylich has a lot of promise for us, and that's in putting up these higher quality forges. Now, 
here we're talking about winter annuals, but I think this also will apply to some other things like uh, some alfalfas, maybe Bermuda grass alfalfa, some of our higher quality forages that also have higher values to people in other industries, whether that be dairy or, or uh, some of the other folks. So if you look at here, the, then the total savings, you can see that the more cows you have, the more money that you make. Well, <clears throat> if we take into account then the fact that either uh, you already have the baler that will do this and you're just putting up hay, or you have to go buy the baler and the bale wrapper, if you annualize those costs, that's going to run you anywhere from seven dollars to $15,000, depending on if you just have to go buy the wrapper or if you have to buy the baler and the wrapper. So in that case, if you subtract that seven or 15, whichever one is appropriate for you, then what we're looking at <clears throat> is we're looking at a break-even cost in here somewhere between um, 75 and 150 beef cows, again, depending on the hay quality that you're putting up as well as uh, what additional equipment you have to purchase. So, so far what we've come up with is if we're trying to justify baleage just on the basis of reducing storage losses, that's not going to help us. If we're looking at just putting up Bermuda grass, that's probably not going to help us. But if we can have the opportunity to put up some of these higher quality winter annuals, then that is certainly a game changer for us and something that certainly is worth considering. Now, <clears throat> The last scenario is where we're going to put these two together and we're going to look at reducing our feeding losses and reducing our feed cost by virtue of putting up some higher quality forage products here. Uh, <clears throat> you can see that overall we're going to have an, a savings of $8 per cow per year for the Bermuda grass baleage and $100 a cow per year uh, for putting up the winter annuals. So then that automatically lowers our, our viable herd size down to about 50 to 75 cows, depending on how much equipment you have to go buy. So one way to look at this um, is if we're talking about Bermuda grass baleage, uh, you can see that in some instances um, that typically it won't pay if we're looking at that from a Bermuda grass baleage standpoint. But once we get over here and start talking about these winter annuals, then it really doesn't matter if it's good, average, or poor hay is typically going to pay for you, uh, and, or a baleage will pay for you. Now, one of the things, now, let me, uh, one thing that I will mention here is we were using, the prices that we were using were as of winter, December, January of 2013, 2014. So at that time, I think the prices we were using was whole cottonseed was about $250 a ton. Uh, corn gluten and soy oil mix was about 225, 250, which those are fairly reasonable prices. Now, however, if we go back and we look at <clears throat> over time what's happened to these prices, and some years we have really low prices where the overall cost of that feed is $200 a ton. On average, it's going to be about 250, but some years it could be $400 a ton. So, kind of that worst case scenario, the thing that we see then is that baleage is going to pay for us almost all the time uh, if we're talking about winter annuals. And so to show you this, <clears throat> and it might make your head hurt a little bit, but if you look over here to the left hand side, all three of those charts, all three of those little lines that you see over there uh, represent the probability that baleage will pay you just uh, looking at Bermuda grass. And so if we look at a net savings of zero dollars then, you can see that there is a very, very, very small percent, about a one or two percent chance that it will actually pay with Bermuda grass. However, if we are talking about putting up winter annuals, <clears throat> and this black line here means we're putting up really good hay, which means we, the, the winter annuals aren't going to save us that much because we're putting up some really high quality hay. The red line is average hay, and the yellow line is very poor hay, much like what we put up in 2013 you can see that in almost every one of those instances, the bale wrapper paid for itself. There's only about one chance out of about 500 that it will not pay. And that would be in a year where feed prices are extremely low and, uh, and, the, redu and the feeding losses were very low. So the take home message for this is, if you're looking at a bale wrapper, Probably one of the biggest ways that it's going to help you pay is either putting up winter annuals or some type of high quality forage. So 
I think as we wind this up, one of the things, a couple of things that we should mention is that certainly I do think that, that baleage technology has a place for a lot of our southeastern cow-calf people. Depending on your, your typical herd or your typical feeding losses, as well as your feeding cost and the quality of the hay that you put up typically, uh, it can be as low as 50 cows. My guess is that really it's going to take somewhere more in the neighborhood of 75 to 100 cows to pay for it. Uh, but again, <clears throat> you also have to consider your labor situation uh, as well as a couple of other factors. Um, just uh, the main things that are going to make it uh, feasible are going to be the lower feeding cost. And I think that's the one thing that we really, really need to focus on is the fact that we are able to put up these higher quality forages or put these forages up at the right time, which uh, lowers our overall feeding cost. However, one of the things to keep in mind is that there are some of these forages that we harvest that it really, uh, even though we can greatly improve their quality, in some instances there are, there are certain um, forages that the difference in the quality at the time of harvest is much greater than others. Things like winter annuals, alfalfa, clovers and some of these other legumes that might be mixed in with Bermuda grass or in the instance say we're putting up a, a Bermuda grass alfalfa baleage which is going to be a very high quality product. So again <clears throat> it's very difficult to justify baleage only if we're considering Bermuda bahia or something else is typically going to be considered a lower quality forage. Uh, if you're interested in more information there is a uh, publication that Dr. Pruitt and myself put together. It's available on the LSU Ag Center website. Uh, you can go there and you can find this publication, The Economics of Baleage. Um, so with that, we'll end right there.